JHK here for the All-Star, and joining me right now is newly signed PFL lightweight, Nasty Nate Williams. Nate, what's going on, man? How you feeling? What's up, brother, man? Hey, I'm, I'm feeling good, man. Feeling good, feeling good. It's, uh, you know, Saturday night, watching some fights at the crib, so glad to be here. Appreciate the opportunity. For sure, for sure, man. Well, let's jump right into it. October 27th, you'll be making your PFL debut Explain to us how this all came together. How did this contract with the PFL get signed? Uh, shout out to my manager, Dave Arvello, with uh, First Round Management. Uh, he, you know, basically got everything worked out. Um, so I was supposed to fight Chuka Willis. Um, Chuka is, um, I, I don't want to say a local stepping stone, but he has fought um, some of the who's who's in the UFC. He's fought the... Uh, the Akeem Duwadus, he's fought the Sadiq Yusufs. Um, it's another guy, um, I can't, can't think of his name right offhand, that he just fought that's now in the UFC as well. So it's like, you know, you don't want to call him the stepping stone, but it seems like you beat Chuka Willis. Uh, the UFC <laughs> comes knocking right after, you know what I'm saying? So I was, you know, uh, trying to get that, uh, had that matchup, you know, it was uh, on that same trajectory, same pathway. But um, Chuka's in the military. And uh, there he's getting deployed to Afghanistan, so he had to, um, you know, paperwork issues, whatever the case may. Long story short, paperwork issues. He wasn't able to show up physically to weigh-ins, and the fight was scrapped because of that. So um, it was a special event. So the fight was actually on a Sunday, and um, I found out actually like Saturday night the fight was canceled. So, but Monday afternoon, um, I was actually getting my hair done, my hair retwisted. Monday afternoon. Um, I got the notice of, about the the PFL, so you know it it was a uh, bittersweet. Yeah, and, and on top of that, you get a a great opponent, man, an opponent that you could really catapult your name off of, which is Don Madge, you know, a former EFC champion, a UFC veteran. You know, what are your overall thoughts on him and and his style of fighting? Uh, Don is tough, man. Uh, he's like you say, he's two and zero in the UFC. So, man, uh, went over him speak is it just shows that i'm ready <laughs> shows that i'm here shows that i'm that you know um i'm ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the with, with the high level of the elite guys um he's tough he's scrappy he he brings the fight he has a good stand up um he's a southpaw you know um and he's been showing his wrestling prowess in his last couple fights uh but you know i they don't know who i am but they gonna find out soon enough. <laughs> yeah, that's the best position to be in, right? <laughs> I got a black belt. Um, I can switch. I can fight both stances, <laughs> southpaw and orthodox. I can, you know, uh, change fluently. I can. Uh, I've been wrestling since I was thirteen. You know what I'm saying? I'm, <laughs> I have a, a pretty extensive wrestling background as well. I mean, uh, I'm five eleven with a seventy four inch reach. You know, so I'm not small. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm coming. You know, I have a very high volume style. So, I mean, it's going to be a very explosive fight, very exciting fight, especially to pop the night off. <laughs> very explosive fight. Well, there's two things I wanted to delve into. What you just mentioned is uh, you fighting from both stances. Is that something that you realized at a young age that you were able to – did it start in fighting or did it start before that? Were you able to throw a ball with both hands? What, what was the situation with that? Uh, well, in wrestling – uh, your your dominant hand is usually the 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 leg same side that you lead uh, lead with. So in wrestling, the 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 fighting southpaw stance is the orthodox stance in wrestling. So I'm right, I'm right handed. So so you lead with your right leg. You know what I'm saying? And that's you know the normal style of wrestling. So I've in wrestling I've always I guess <clears throat> learned southpaw. You know what I'm saying? So southpaw came came natural to me because of you know. Uh, that's the, the conventional wrestling stance. I've always been in that stance, but you know, and then learning of conventional striking, c turning around and making it, and learning how to do it orthodox, just made my southpaw even better because that you know is that's what I was always used to. So that that's kind of how you know I was able to incorporate incorporate both so fast. Was that easy for you, or did it take a a long time to make those adjustments? I mean, there was some transitional periods. Don't don't think like it just. I'm a, I was just a natural. It came overnight. But I, I was it. I was able to transition. I guess more smooth than most. If that makes sense. 
Do you feel stronger in one stance compared to the other? No. No, okay. No. That's dangerous no. right there. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm comfortable in both. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable in both. I'm dangerous in both. And, you know, um, I'm excited. <laughs> now, with you, met, you mentioned the wrestling. At, you started at 13 years old. And, you know, there's so many wrestlers in, in MMA now. And there've always been most of the the champions are wrestlers um with yourself you know like what aspect of the wrestling did you take over to MMA and and implement it the best oh uh, the top game top control uh folk style wrestling we focus on riding ride time they, they actually give you a point in college for accumulating ride time for controlling the man you uh controlling your opponent keeping him down so Learning how to ride, learning how to control my opponent, keeping him down, keeping him isolated, neutralized. Uh, that's probably the biggest thing I've learned um, and been in, able to incorporate that in my jiu-jitsu style. I call my jiu-jitsu style American jiu-jitsu um, just because American folk style wrestling integrated with jiu-jitsu. Some people, the old school guys call it catch wrestling. Um, but, you know, um, I like more top game in jiu-jitsu, more I do a lot of head chokes um, on, uh, on top attacks versus – pulling guard coming off my back. Hey, even though I can throw submissions off my back as well, and I am versatile there as well. But if I gun to my head, I'm, I'm going I'm to play on top. With you, I've noticed that throughout your career, you've been bouncing back and forth between lightweight and featherweight. You know, moving forward, are you going to stick at, at lightweight? Is that where you feel more comfortable? Uh, I just need a good nutritionist, man. Uh, I have I actually slick been the same size since high school. I wrestled 45 my senior year in high school. I wrestled 49 in college. And um, 45, I can make it, but it's, it it takes, it, it you know, it takes some serious dieting, serious um, sauna time, weight cutting, all the, the whole nine. 55, I can make 55 next weekend. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I walk around about like 175, one set, between 72 to 75. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's eating carbs. If I just take out carbs, I drop down to the low 60s pretty easily so I can make 55 on call. But um, 55 usually depending on the matchup, but um, I do uh, plan on going down to 45. 45 is my home. 45 is where I feel like I'm, I, I can make a real big statement. But right now, you know, I'm enjoying the 55s. The, the guys is, that's not 200 pounds coming down to 55. <laughs> I don't want to fight those guys. As you get older – the cuts are becoming harder or just yeah, it's different? Yeah, that's, that's, that's the whole thing. I'm 34 now, man. Uh, oof. I mean, I don't have the same damage because I start, I didn't start fighting until I was 25. Like, I, when I walked into an MMA gym, I was 25 years old. I graduated college, you know, and was trying to find the next thing to do. You know, I was a teacher for a while. That wasn't really my thing. So I, you know, was starting fighting. Like I said, I had the wrestling background and, uh, so I was 25, so I don't have like the, the the miles on me like other fighters do. I didn't turn pro till I was like 27. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have the miles on me per se. I'm still like fresh when it comes to that. But just the age, you know, cutting 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 to 45 is 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 is, is rougher. Is 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 more rough at 34 versus when I was 28, 27. So yeah, I do feel it. You were a teacher. That. You were a teacher for a little while. What what were you teaching? Sixth grade language arts. I got my degree wow. in English. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Hey, mm -hmm. sixth grade. Yep. That's a rough age to teach kids. <laughs> and middle schoolers. Middle schoolers are um, they're inter interesting age because one minute they love you, the next minute they hate you. And it's all in the same 20 minutes, 20 minute times. Man. So, <laughs> yeah, um, they, they, they want to be treated like adults. And then until they get in trouble, they want to be reminded that they're kids. So, I mean, you know, hormones, yeah. they're trying to figure out who they are. It's an interesting uh, age, to say the least. Yeah, anyways, going back to your fight, man, coming up on the PFL, um, you know, Don Madge, one thing that sticks out about him is that he hasn't fought since July of 2019. Do you, do you think cage rust, you know, do you think it's a superstition or do you feel like that's a real thing? Uh, it just depends on, I guess, the person. If you let it manifest into something, then of course it it'll take over. But if you know, if you just feel if you feel like it's not that, you know, then you know, and go in there and perform regardless of if you fought 
last week or two 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 years ago, then you know that like I said, it's all every a lot a lot of things uh, that separate the champs from the average guys are is the mindset, is the, the mindset. Um, the John Joneses getting in deep arm bars, deep Camoras, deep arm bars, deep by Vitor Belfort and not tapping. You know what I'm saying? Elbow hyperextended. That's a mindset. Um, a lot of people have the tools, the, the, the skill set. But when things get tough, when the going gets tough, people quit. People back out. People, you know, have uh, will turn their mind. And, you know, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to focus on that, you know, making sure I have the the, the strong mindset and 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 try to focus on that, that that ninety five percent. I say ninety percent because that's the ninety percent of fighting. And like I said once again, that separates the the champs from the average Joes. One thing about you is that you're the polar opposite from Don Madge. You've been active as hell the last two years, man. You fought more than I don't know most guys I've ever I've been talking to. And how did you stay so active, man? How did you be get, how did you get keep getting fights? It's just amazing to me. Uh, the the promotion. Shout out to the NFC. Uh, Dave Oblas is the uh, owner of uh, of that promoter. Uh, National Fight Championships here in Atlanta. They they look out for me. Um, I think I I like to say I sell a, enough tickets. Um, I'm probably not the biggest ticket seller in Atlanta by any means, but I do a nice share of ticket sales. Um, so they bring in, you know, guys, I, I got 20 fights and, and, you know, um, 17, 15 fights. Uh, it's, you can't just bring in anybody to fight me. So, you know, they, they flew guys in from out of town, kept, you know, kept interesting opponents, kept, kept me active, especially during the COVID. That was hard to do. He was one of the, uh, <clears throat> I want to say only sporting events that didn't really shut down during COVID at all. Kept it going. Follow protocol, never had any big outbreaks or anything like that. So shout out to the NFC. Shout out to Dave Oblast. They uh literally kept me active this this entire time. Um one um but that's my MO. I like to fight, stay active, stay healthy if I don't take any damage. I mean, like I said, I started a little later, so you know, I had to catch up. <laughs> like me and my boy say in the baseball, catch up, mustard. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> all right for sure now uh this fight coming up you don't have to worry about selling tickets you just have to worry about being ready and fighting how do you see, see yourself performing against madge in this debut oh uh, actually they do want me to sell tickets oh uh, they do. Uh, okay yeah promo code uh will 20 <laughs> you get i get uh 20 percent i guess on each ticket sale so they are encouraging you know people to go out and get the tickets but I mean, it's not like you know heavy press, but uh, I'm. It, it's about time, man. I'm just ready to go out here and just you know people know who Don Madge is, so of course I might be a 800, <laughs> 800 underdog, but place the money, put the money down. <laughs> like they don't know, but they will. They will. They will find out soon enough. And like they think we're a small gym, extreme sports. But I mean, we put guys in in high, high high places before. Clint Hester was in the UFC Ultimate Fighter. Uh, John Jones, Chell Sonnen edition, came on there. Um, got into the UFC, went four and zero in the UFC. Ended up going down American Top Team, um, Coconut Creek. Went went zero and three down there. You know what I'm saying? But we had Mike Graves. Mike Graves was in the uh, Ultimate Fighter. Was on the UFC. Um, he was at our gym when he got the call. You know, left out Byron Bloodworth. I was in the UFC way back in the day, you know. So we've gotten guys. My boy Robert Hell fought in the PFL one, uh, one one time already. So we've put guys. Joe Elmore, my brother Joe Elmore, fought in Bellator, you know. So we've had guys there uh, in, in the big stages before. So this is nothing new. We just rinse and repeat. All right. Now, what's your aspirations with the PFL? Could we see you in next season, 2022? Have you have you thought that far forward? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, of course, one fight at a time, for mm -hmm. sure. But I mean, went out the contract, got a three fight deal, win the contract out, mm -hmm. and getting a million dollar tournament next year. You know, let's get, get these M's.
Sounds like sounds like a plan. Nasty Nate, appreciate the time, man. Good luck on the fight. And uh, yeah, I'll be watching, man. This is an exciting matchup. People don't know, but they, they're going to tune in on October they 27th. <laughs> they don't know, but they will find out. Hey, just just tell them Google me, man. Nasty Nate, I'm on YouTube. I'm not a teddy bear. Shout out to my boy Nate, William, Nate Teddy Bear Williams, man. People inbox me for him all the time and inbox him for me all the time and we're actually homies because we got the same name but i mean he's you know he's hispanic and he's five like two and i'm you know african-american and i'm 5 11 so we're not, we're not that hard to <laughs> different differentiate between the two yeah but uh sure. yeah. Look, check it out man this volume uh, i keep a high volume style so it will be exciting i promise